give you we praise. We adore you, King. We exalt you, great I am. Lord, we exalt you. Receive honor, Lord. Receive all the glory. You alone is our creator. You alone is our God. You are the most high. There's no one like you, Lord. Holy, holy is your God who sits above the heavens. Holy is your God who was and is and shall be. Holy is your God who never fails. Holy is your God who is Lord, our creator. We adore you this afternoon. We declare you have done great things. You have brought us. Lord, we are so grateful that here we are before no one but you, the creator, the owner of heaven and the earth. We adore you. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. Lord, we lift you up in this city. We lift you up on this hill. We lift you up in our nation. We lift you up in our families. We lift you up above every power. We lift you up because you are Lord, our God Almighty. We lift you up above every circumstance. So Lord, receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. And all the worship. And as we come, we open our hearts before you. And we ask of you, Lord, to speak to us. We pray, Lord, that you silence all other voices. That only your voice will be clear. Father, we ask of you to minister to each one of us. We do not want to go away the same. Lord, we cry out to you that you open our hearts tonight. We cry out to you, Lord, because you have made it possible for us to be here. You have a purpose. And in a special way, we thank you for this new month. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us in this new month. Who are we if it was not by your grace? So we thank you for each one of us, for all those that are alive. We bless your name for moments like this to come before you. So right now, we choose, Lord, to know nobody else, to look unto nobody else, to hear nobody else but you. So, Father, have your way in us. We adore you, God, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ah, friends, if you are happy, man, crossing over from one man to another one, it's not easy. Eh? We did not pay God anything, friends. But here we are. What a blessing to be favored by God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Emmanuel Oguti. And uh, I've always said and I will continue to say that the most important thing is that God saved me. The rest, those are just bonuses. Isn't it true? They are just bonuses. But if God saved you, Thank God for that. I don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, you are most welcome, both those that are in and those that are online. You are most welcome to come to be, come before the Lord. Our theme is drawn from Romans 20, I mean 3:23. And, uh, and it is stated like this, the glory of God falling and being restored. The glory of God falling and being restored. And in simple terms, biblically, 
we can say this word glory of God can easily be translated or be referred to as one that has authority or power or magnificence Oh, God is the king of kings. That's what, that's what it means. He is the king of kings. He is the majesty. He is the, I mean, the, of absolute power, if we can say, absolute authority. Because the heaven and the earth and all that are in it belongs to, to him. Nobody else. When God says this, Nobody can say another word. You can, if you try, you will actually not succeed what, whatever he says. I mean, whatever you try to do. So, I, um, it is very important for us, surely, to give God the glory. It is surely important for us to give God the glory. And so, friends, without even actually going further, I will ask us, if you really appreciate this God for what he has done to you or for us, I will ask us to do a simple thing to just rise up and first thank him for this moment, for your life, for your family, for who you are, for you may be your children. Just give God thanks because friends, it is not something we can. Let me tell you, we are going to see that indeed it was worthy to thank God. It is worthy. Lord, we give you thanks. Father, for loving us. We give you thanks for giving us life. We give you thanks for fighting many battles. We give you thanks for bringing us to oh God on this very day. Lord, we give you thanks for this season that we have entered. We give you thanks for those families. We give you thanks for your word that you give unto us. We give you thanks, Father, for your servants. We give you thanks for Uganda. We give you thanks for your grace that you have made manifest. We give you thanks that you are our God. God, we give you thanks for your own love that you've accorded unto us. So be exalted and be magnified, Lord. Be magnified, Lord. In our hearts, we declare there's no one like you. As we sang, that there is none, none at all, none of God who is like you. Nobody, not one. And so, Lord, we give you thanks that despite you are great and glorious, you can allow us to come. You can allow us to share glory with you. You can allow us to be created in your own image. Father, we give you thanks. Because, Lord, you have given us all. Take on and take all the glory. And be magnified, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, going back to the text, I want just to read. We shall be going here and there. But I know God as a reason for this text to come, it depicts something. It says all have fallen short of God's glory. And you can actually agree with me. Friends, God created us in his own image. He created us in his own image. And I want us to be sincere with ourselves. If you look at your life, if you look at your life, do you reflect, does it reflect what you do, what you are involved in, in your workplace, in your relation, name it, in the leadership? Do you, does it reflect? 
the image of God. You know, it's one thing to say, God, we are the I mean, images of God. But let's be sincere with ourselves. Uh, if it is really being sincere, think, up, think about what you have been thinking about since morning. Does it glorify God? Does it? Friends, let's be sincere with ourselves. Because this is a place that is going to take us to a place of coming naked before God. And we say, Lord, forgive us. Indeed, we have fallen short of your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The theme is taken from Romans 20, I mean 3, verse 23. He says, for all have sinned and fall short of, of the glory of God. All have sinned. All. You hear some people sometimes, and I, I don't want to go there, but I'm going to say it. When we talk about repentance, friends, people say, how many times shall I repent? But I want to say as many times as you sin, you need to repent. If you are a child of God, and that's it. So if, if there is anybody who can stand up and tell me I have never seen, then this message is not for you. If you can stand up and you tell me that. And I would want to know which planet, which place you are living in. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. All. I want us as we are sharing this thing, begin to reflect. Begin to touch your own life. That when you can come before God and you cry out, you cry out, how we have ashamed, how we have doubted, how we have defiled this glory because God created us in his own image. Now, what by us sinning will defile his glory? And that's why we can't see certain things happening. We can't see the power of God we cannot experience his love in the way he desires. We cannot change the situations around us. You know, you find us a Christian, and this is a very challenging one. There are certain things that should not be happening near where a Christian is. But you are staying in a, in, a, in, a, in a community or in a place. And the witch doctor's what? Shrine is also there. And I'm asking myself, are you a child of God? Do you carry the glory? Do you carry the glory of God? Because that glory has power to extinguish that power that is actually next to you. Hallelujah. 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 He says in verse 24 saying, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God that when we all had fallen, he had a, 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 mean a plan. Today many people will talk about plan B. The 
that early church tried all that they did. They could not do it until Jesus showed up and said to the Father, I am ready to go. And he came down here. He came down. He allowed himself to be born as a mere baby, I mean a child, I mean a human being, entering the person that he created. And then he was born, walked, suffered, was beaten, crucified, died, buried, and then he rose up. All this he did, did for me and you. And if you are there, the only person that can restore us is Jesus Christ. Only him. There's nobody else. If, like I've said, all, us, all of us have sinned and have fallen short of God's glory. So friends, all of us, we need Christ. All of us, it doesn't matter which position. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what name. It doesn't matter what connection you have. It doesn't matter what machine gun you are carrying. It doesn't matter. We all need Christ. If you are deceiving yourself that I am a, I mean a Christian and you have never given your life to the Lord, friends, I want to tell us, you need Christ. And you just don't need, you need him in your life and you need to do what he says you should do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, having said that, the text that we're given clearly tells us that all has fallen. All has, all of us. Now, how do we fall? What makes us to fall? And that's what I want to address. Sin. Sin is the major cause. When we read in the book of Genesis, we see God created a man in his own image. And God was fellowshipping with man. But when man sinned, man took off from the garden of Eden. What made him to run away? Sin. Now, because man is sinned, that is how man, I mean, lost the glory. The glory. That's how man lost it. We lost it. That is how Adam lost it. You may be quick to say Adam lost it, but how many times have you lost it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Adam lost it like that when he decided to do what God had already said to him. Don't do it. Don't eat the fruit. So friends, it is that bad. If you read that story, let me just read it briefly. Genesis, go back to Genesis with me. Ah, Hallelujah. I'm just going to pick some few because I can't read all. The time is really not very good with us. And I want just to begin from verse 26. It says, then God said, let us make man in our chapter 1. Genesis 1 from verse 26. God said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
over the bird of the air and over, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. Hallelujah. God created us in his own image. In his own image. But when you come to chapter 3, that's where man accepted to eat the forbidden fruit. And in chapter, I mean, chapter 3 verse 9, you see man running away from God. Because of sin. That's where God was asking man. I say, man, where are you? Because of sin, he could not contain being near Jesus or being near God. Sin had thrown him out. He had already lost. But that now, that's where Jesus comes very handy. Jesus comes to restore the glory that we lost. In Revelation chapter 5, or 4 and 11, chapter 5, you get it there. That Jesus came to restore all those that we are lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friend, I want us to go there a little bit also. Revelation chapter 5. We are seeing Jesus who restored the glory that we lost. 5. Or even 4.11. You can also do it. 4.11. It says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power that you created all things. By your will, they existed and were created. Chapter 5 also, I mean verse, chapter 5 verse 12, he says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. These are all things that God had already purposed for us. But because of sin, we lose, we had lost all those. But now when Christ comes and he dies for us on the cross, he restores all these things. And that's why I'm telling us we must be serious with our salvation. If you are born again, then be serious with your salvation. Do not compromise. Live a righteous life. And then these things that we have lost, you can see the glory of God has all this power, blessing, name it, honor, wisdom. You know, we are struggling a lot. But when the whole thing is in God, but because we have lost it, some of us have given our lives, but we are living a double standard life. When you are with the brethren, you are actually born again. Outside where the, where the, 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 the fellowship of brethren, you are another one. In the office, you are another one. In your home, some of us are actually terror. Terrorists, if I can use that word. Are you born again? Hallelujah. So God says, yes, he did all those things. 
One of the things that actually define the glory is holiness. God is a holy God. And that's what, that's what makes him actually carry glory. When God speaks to us and says to us, be ye holy because I am holy. Well, sometimes we don't want to actually really to do it. Many. He say, no, nobody can be holy. But I have always said, man, if God said you can be holy, you can be holy. Hey. Because God is all-knowing. He created us and his son came on this planet earth and he lived a holy life. The Bible says he was 100% man. So we cannot begin telling ourselves, because I am flesh and blood. Ah, uh-huh. if you are flesh and blood and you have Christ in you, friends, you can live a holy life. Amen? You can if you are serious. Because the man, I mean the God who created you, wants you to be holy. Because that is what he is. That's what makes him carry the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now friends, we can go on and go on, but I will ask you to read in the story. Eh? This one, we are not going to read it because I want to do something else. If you read the story of Moses, every time he went on the mountain, the Bible says that he would come down with the face that were shining, shining. That's actually how sometimes the glory of God, when he rests upon you, you go actually shining everywhere. Hallelujah. You shine. Where people are failing for you, you are shining for God. Now, when you go back, that is in the true, I mean, in the, in, uh, in the, in the books of Exodus, eh? 34. I will ask you to read from 29 to 30. I mean, yeah, 29 to 34. 34. You will see, I may not go there because the time is not very, very good for me. Now, also we read in the book of Judges, and this is an, a case example that the glory can fade. This is a story of, I mean, this man, all we know him, Samson. God created him and put upon him such a grace, such power. Power upon him. Judges 16, if you read it from 29 to the end, you find this man had, until he fell into sin, he had the power that the enemies would come and they would just tear them into pieces. But the day when he succumbed to die, I mean, Delilah, the power went off. And when that happened, when the enemies came, he thought he was still having power. Like sometimes us, you are a child of God. You are walking in wickedness, but you are still thinking that you have the grace. So Samson thought he still had power when he had actually given the sacred, the thing, something that actually was not supposed to give it out to Delilah. And what happened? The enemies, the Philistines came, got hold of him, got hold of his eyes. Now, friends, by the time your eyes are good, all of them, you become deformed. He was deformed. So if the, God created you to have two eyes, now one, two, all the two eyes are not there, has been gouged out. Hasn't you lost it? He had lost it as if that was not enough. He had also lost the power. So that is why I was telling us sin will make us 
actually lose the glory of God. But friends, there is a, re a remedy. Hallelujah. One, you need to respond to God. If you know you have sinned against God, you need to come to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Repentance will now enable you, if you are already a child of God, you will be able to be restored. The glory shall be restored upon you. If you have not known God, you need to come to God and he will restore you to the very person he has created you to be. If, you, if, you, if that is not another one that you want to know, one of the things that we can do is to get into place of prayer. True prayer. Because when Samson prayed and he cried unto God, he said, Lord, just this one time, give me the strength, give me the power, and I will die with these Philistines. And that's what happened. He prayed. So friends, prayer is something that can help us to regain that which we had already lost if we are praying rightly. I am qualifying it because we need to. It's not just praying, uh, no, rightly. And then another one that actually does it for us is when, if you are not known God, then you must give your life to the Lord so that God can restore you. Hallelujah. He can restore you properly. Then the next thing is we need to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to believe God. Jesus said to the men, to Mary and Martha, that if you will only believe, you will see the glory of God. In John chapter 11, verse from verse 12, 40 to 45, you see, and when actually Jesus went there, he called out, and Lazarus came out. Lazarus came out. But we need to believe God. Seriously. We need to get rid of sin. If we are going to rest, God to restore, we need to reject the sin, friends. At a personal level, family, business, leadership, name it. We need to reject. We need to get rid of sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 60, one to two says, God was taking, talking to the Israel and saying, Arise and shine for the glory. I mean, the what? The light of God has risen upon you. The light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And he is, verse two, part B says, And his glory will be seen upon you. Now God is asking us to arise, friends. We are the church. You are the church. Let us not keep pointing fingers. Let's arise and shine for God. Shine for God in that company. Shine for God in that, I mean, leadership. Shine for God in that marriage. Yes. In the ministry that the Lord has called us into, let us shine. It is a decision. Isaiah writes and says, Arise and shine. For the glory of God has risen upon you. It is a decision that we make. Because if we make a decision, God will help us, friends. You can come to God and you tell God, Lord, I long to shine for you. I long to carry the glory of God. God is not bad God. He's a good God. 
He will give us what we desire. And it is his desire that we call his glory. I can imagine now, you are asking God what he desires for us. That we carry his glory. Because God created us in his own image. Meaning he desired that we carry his, his glory. So friends, I want us to pray. Now, time is not a best ally. But uh, we can pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to tell God something? Hallelujah. Can we rise up and just pray for yourself again? If God has spoken to you somewhere, tell him, I'm sorry for this. I have taken you for granted. I've lived a careless life. Tell God. He is here. He is able to have, have his way. Just tell him. And then after that, I want us to pray that the Lord will actually release fresh. I put his glory upon your life. His presence, one of the things that brings the presence, I mean the glory of God upon us, is to be in His presence. When you are in the presence of the Lord, you can rub on the Lord's I mean, glory can rub upon you. So those are some of the things that we can do if we want this glory to be restored. As a church, we need to actually indulge ourselves in serious prayer. In the book of Isaiah 50, 50 I mean 58, verse 58, verse what? Uh, Isaiah 58, verse 8. It talks about the glory of God brings, I mean, gives us protection. It is not for nothing, friends. This thing, we need it so that you can be protected. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks. For yet another moment. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. Here we come before you today. We are saying, Lord, we are sorry for all the Philippi things, for all the desires, for all of God the rebellion. Lord, we say we are sorry where we have not been Lord determined Lord to live a righteous life, a holy life Father we ask for mercy, forgive us where we have been careless Lord as believers some of us oh Lord have Lord lived a double standard life we cry out to you for mercy we are sorry God where we have defied you are glory by the things that we have done we ask of you for mercy Lord some of us have not embraced the thing of prayer yes we no longer take being in the presence of God as an ideal thing Lord forgive us Lord even in our families we are saying God we are sorry in our marriages in our businesses Lord we are sorry in the leadership Lord, we ask for mercy. Forgive us. Lord, this day we come before you. And Lord, we say, Lord, we are sorry. But Lord, forgive us. Forgive our land. Forgive us as a nation. Lord, where we have distanced ourselves. You called us that we may worship you. But we are not worshiping other things. We are worshiping money. We are worshiping human beings. We are worshiping the demons. Lord, we are sorry in our clans, in our tribe. Forgive us. Lord, we are sorry for even, oh God, the way we have King of Glory embraced even immorality. Lord, we are sorry. We cry unto you, Lord, the way we dress ourselves. Father, we are sorry. We ask of you, Lord, to remember mercy. We have ashamed your name. Most especially we who say we are born again. We have ashamed you in the offices, in the leaderships, in our marriages. Father, we are sorry. We have ashamed you in the political, political, Lord, King of God, arena. We have ashamed you. We have compromised. We have not, oh God, honored your word bearer. 
Lord, have mercy. Forgive us. Forgive us. We have raised wicked altars in our nation, in our families, in our clans. Father, we ask of you for mercy. Forgive us for wicked covenants that we entered with demons. Oh Lord, have mercy. This day here we say, Lord, remember mercy as you remembered, oh God, Father, some soul. When they cried unto you and they said, Remember me, Lord. Today, we ask that God remember, remember mercy upon us. Remember mercy upon our families. Remember mercy upon our nation. Remember mercy upon your church. Remember mercy upon our leadership. Remember mercy upon our dear ones. Remember mercy upon our marriages. Remember mercy upon us as men. Remember mercy upon us as your children. We are sorry. And friends, the Bible tells us that when Samson cried, God responded. Our God is able to respond. If you desire to carry his glory, you can pray. You want to be holy. You want to walk rightly before God. Just ask God, here I am. I surrender my life. If you have not known him and you desire that he restores you to the person God created you to be, you can give your life to him because he's the one that will restore. Here we are, Lord. We cry out to you, Lord. Lord, we have heard, we have heard your word. We have read your word. And your word says that your word alone shall never pass away. Even the heaven, the earth shall pass away. But your word, Lord, we have read that when Samson cried, you responded. We have read, we have heard that Jesus came and restored the glory. Lord, restore the power. Lord, restore God's wisdom. Restore riches. Restore the honor. We cry out to you, Lord, that this day let there be restoration. Restore us. Restore us. Restore me, Lord. Restore my family to the place of deep worship of you alone. Restore my brothers. Restore your children. Restore us as a church. Restore us as a nation. We cry unto you, Lord, that restore Uganda, that once upon a time, God, this nation will be known as a nation of God. Lord, restore us. Restore us. Restore those children that have gone wayward. Restore the men. Restore the ones that have gone wayward. Restore the young people that has been consumed in our oh God. Homosexuality. Restore we pray that you restore the families that has gone, oh God, wicked ways. Lord, we ask for your restoration. And Lord, today, we know, God, that the church which, where the glory of God is, great things happen. Power is, power to heal is available there. Yes, oh God, deliverance is able. And tonight we ask of you, Father, to release your glory. Lord, let your glory fill this. Fill us. Fill your church. Fill us, oh God, afresh by your own presence. Fill us by your God, your power. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you fill us. And, Lord, give us, Lord, your spirit that, Lord, we will be able to shine for you. 
in every place. Our Father and our God, we adore you because you are God who does wonders. And now, Lord, if there be anyone, anyone who is suffering any disease, in your presence we are. We declare and decree, Father, healing every yoke that the enemy had put in the name of Jesus Christ. We break it every situation, every situation that is connected to even of God, rebellion against the word of God, we break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, the presence of God is able to do more than we can think of. And so, let's believe God. As we are going to go, let somebody bring our, I mean the basket, and we honor God with our th- our offerings, our tithes. It is important, friends, to honor God because he created us for that very purpose. And then we pray finally and then I let you go. Loving God, we give you thanks and we give you honor because you are right here and you are God who meets needs. You are God who changes situation. You know every detail of each one of us Lord I ask that you minister to everyone touch everyone break every yoke scatter every works of the enemy overthrow every works of Satan break every curse Lord heal every diseases Father I pray that you resurrect our love for you. Resurrect the fire to worship you in truth and in spirit upon our lives. Resurrect the fire to pray. Help us, oh God, that even this day as we gather here, let your presence saturate this place. The Lord even those that walk in here God shall have an encounter with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And now, Father, may your face shine upon each one of us. And may your blessing that adds no sorrow abound upon us and our dear ones. Abound upon all that we, O Lord, do. And Lord, may you alone guard us, preserve us, and Lord, help us to live rightly before you, that as we go out, that we will shine for you everywhere in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friends.